This booked automation flow right here is what has generated so much success in my business when it comes to consistency, ease of use on my DJ side, and in general, improving everything that we do here. What's up everyone, it's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. I'm in the DJ Life podcast studio today because we're gonna be talking about my complete booked automation workflow that keeps you on track with all of your clients and keeps your clients up to date on everything related to their wedding. So you may be asking, what is a booked wedding automation or what is a booked automation in general? It takes a piece of software that can do automated sequential stuff related to your events, AKA a CRM. I personally use HoneyBook on our back end for our whole entire company. We have five DJs, we do a little over 200 events a year. We have a lot of stuff to manage on the back end, so we utilize automations to allow our team to have a structured system to manage every single event. In the past, I've gone through our lead funnel automation where basically it's the drip campaign or the campaign that we put all of our new leads into to try and maximize the potential to book all of our clients. Now we're gonna be talking about how do we handle our book clients from the point that they book up until the actual wedding and or the event and afterwards, how do we capture reviews and testimonials and all that good stuff to help us get even more leads that'll go through the lead funnel and then transition their way into the booked funnel yet again. But to give you guys a simple description of what a booked automation or a booked wedding automation does, it's almost like your little personal virtual assistant for all of your events. What it's gonna do is it's gonna stay in constant communication with your clients leading up until their event and after their event, but it's also gonna have set reminders and tasks that are gonna populate for you specifically to do leading up to the event. So that way you stay on top of every single event and you don't have to worry about all the different events you have coming up on the calendar. Me and none of my DJs here at Fusion Sound Lighting really know what our calendar is for the most part. I mean, we have our calendar, it's on a Google spreadsheet. We can see our Google calendar and all the events we have coming up. But in terms of like worrying about, oh, what's happening at that wedding? Oh, what's happening at this wedding? What, what are the details? What's all that? It's all taken care of. This booked automation flow that we're about to go through literally walks through the whole entire process. It has set reminders that populate in each of their task windows for each of my DJs so that they know exactly exactly what they have to be doing at what times to be on top of every single wedding or event they have coming up on the calendar. And I'm gonna transition over to my laptop right now to show you guys exactly what we have in our wedding booked automation workflow. But if you want a complete breakdown, a complete Word document that has all the different email templates, all the different tasks, exactly when everything populates, all written out for you, go ahead, click the link down below or it'll be on the pinned comment. You guys can actually purchase my complete wedding booked automation flow that guarantees constant communication, raving reviews, it captures the reviews, it keeps your DJs on top of everything that they need to do leading up to the event. Go check out the pinned comment down below. It's gonna be on sale for $50. That is a little steeper than the wedding booked automation, but when it comes down to consistency, delivering results again and again and again, and having a perfected system, this is the most perfected system that we have. There are over 57 different steps that take place in every single wedding that we have here, and it is extremely thorough and has been developed over the course of the last five years of us operating this company. But let's go ahead, jump on the laptop, and let me show you everything we include in our booked wedding automation flow. Before we get into the nitty gritty on the laptop, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am in the DJ Life podcast studio inside of my house. This is where we filmed the DJ Life podcast. If you've never heard of the DJ Life podcast and you are a solo, multi-op, whatever DJ trying to grow a DJ business, I highly recommend you check out the podcast. Myself and Eric Mazengale, who is another DJ multi-op owner here in Greensboro, North Carolina, he literally lives 10 minutes from me. We have technically competing businesses, but really I don't think we're competing at all. There's more than enough clients to go around and also we have different types of ways we form our business. He's more low end, I'm high end. But we film a podcast together and we talk about business every single week. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. we jump on YouTube live to film the podcast and you guys can contribute to the podcast via the live chat. We bring in industry guests all the time, Jason Janai, Joe Bunn, bar and a lot of other names that you might not even know in the industry that are really killing it and are experts in the field. We bring them in, we talk to them, and we have so much fun learning and basically growing everyone in the DJ community. So 
Check out the DJ Life podcast if you need more business-related stuff. You can also listen to it on Spotify or Apple Music or anything like that. It's the DJ Life podcast. It's available everywhere. Anyways, now let's jump into the computer once again. All right, so we're in HoneyBook right now and we're in the automation section. As you can see, I have a variety of different automations set up. We went through our new Wedding Lead 2023 funnel, which has 30 steps in the last video. If you haven't checked it out, highly recommend you go check it out. You can also get all of the different emails and templates that I use to text and email and follow up with all of our leads on a regular basis. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about our booked wedding funnel, our booked workflow automation, whatever you wanna call it, our booked automation. As you can see, I have one for every single DJ here at FSL, all five of them, and all of them have roughly 51 steps. I said 57, they probably used to have 57 or 47, now they have 51. It's a lot. Let's go ahead and jump into one of these. We're gonna look at my personal one. The first thing I wanna talk about also is I'm set up as a multi-op. So we have two different entities kind of in HoneyBook. We have our admin account, which is Hannah, who is basically their liaison. And then we have the DJ. So in any one of these workflows, they're getting emails both from Hannah and from the DJ. We actually, in this automation, the way we do that is we just alternate the email signature. All of our emails come from info at fusionsoundlighting.com, even though like I have a Rick, there's a Ralph, Drake, all of them have their own email addresses. We just make all the emails come from info at Fusion and we just change out the signature. And I'll show you how we do that in a second. Pretty much, we start off every one of our, and I'm not gonna show you all these templates. Again, if you want the templates, you can purchase them down below. But the first email that gets sent out when we apply it is an introduction from the DJ. So this one says, hi, this is Rick. I'm beyond excited to be your wedding DJ. We use two really cool softwares here at FSL. One is our planning software, which we will email you about in a couple days to get set up. The second one is our CRM HoneyBook, which stores all of our emails, files, payments, information, all in one area. At the bottom of any email, you will see a button that says view in conversation. This will take you to the dashboard where they can then review our emails, reply, see proposals, and even make payments. This simply is like the basically intro. So they just made the down deposit. They're now ready to book. They're excited. They want to know what's next. So this is the intro email explaining to them exactly what it is that they're gonna be interacting with with our company now. If you guys haven't seen HoneyBook, check out my other video, I'll link them down below, but HoneyBook has a complete dashboard. It stores every email that you send between your clients and back, so it's a really cool reference right before the event to scroll through all the emails. Um, but it, all the payments, contracting, everything happens in HoneyBook. It is an extremely powerful software and we love it. And then it basically says, if you need anything, feel free to email me or info at Fusion Sound and Lighting email. Our CRM HoneyBook automatically copies me and our info account on anything. So in HoneyBook, you can set up multiple different profiles and if the client emails info, it automatically copies Rick as well. Everyone that's on that HoneyBook automatically copies and sends it to everyone. So it's super helpful on that too and keeping everyone informed. So if you have like a bride and groom in there and you send the email, it'll send that email individually to each party as well, which is cool. But it keeps everyone in constant communication knowing everything that's happening. So we asked for two things. One, we wanna know who the fiance is and if they would like us to copy them in on all their information. All we need is their email and their phone number. We'll add them in the HoneyBook and then they'll get the same email reminders that we're sending to both of them. And then the second one is I always like to follow, have the DJs and Fusion follow all of our couples on Instagram. So we ask for their at names if they have it. And um, then you will see there's actually a task right after that for them to go do it. After the first initial email is sent out, we have a variety of different tasks that are populated initially. One of those tasks is to update the projection sheet. So we keep a projection log. So whenever we got a new booking, we go in and we enter when the payments are gonna happen for this client, the down deposit, all that. So. There's a task in here for our admin to go update our projection sheet. Then we have an admin task to go create the calendar event. So we wanna double down. We go to Google Calendar, we create a new calendar event for this event. We invite the DJ, make sure it's on the info and the DJ's calendar, all good to go there. In addition, immediately we also have a task that populates for both the DJ and the admin to follow the couple on Instagram. Will they respond to the first email? Who knows? That's why we created a secondary follow-up. So there is three days later, we have a modified version of the exact same email that says basically the exact same thing below. I'm beyond excited, but the intro basically says, Rick checking in, did you see my initial email? So this is set to manually approve. 
So three days after the initial email goes out, if they didn't send us over the info for the fiance or responded with their at names, this will basically be queued and triggered to automatically approve the email to email them again. And then two days after that, there is another admin test that populates and says, if no info has been given to us yet, go ahead and have the DJ text the couple the info. So a lot of my tasks, I have the admin basically being the role of doing it because my admin is reliable. My DJs have a lot on their plate. They're doing a lot of events. Some of them aren't full-time, some of them are full-time. Requiring them to do critical things is not great. So I put that burden on the admin. If you're a solo op, of course, you just generate this being your job. Basically, after we get their contact info, we get their admin uh, details of their Instagrams and whatnot. Then we have a task for us to go ahead and create our Vibo planning app for them and to send them the info. We have an email template for that that basically just says, hey, this is our planning software. There's a video that explains what the planning software is, but we have a task that populates one day after we finally get to follow the couples on Instagram to create their planning app. If you need more details on Vibo, I just made a video on Vibo. Go check it out. It's by far the easiest best planning software tool possible for DJs. It is incredible. I've been using it since 2018. I would not plan a wedding with any other tool or give them anything other than Vibo. Then five days after that, we have check-in points. And this is kind of going to now move into all the initial stuff is over. We got all the initial details. We got their fiance. We got their Instagrams. We get them set up with the planning app. Now we're kind of moving into the check-in phase. This is where the system takes over to stay in constant communication with your couple. Five days after we send them the info for the app, there's an email that goes out checking in on them to see if they got around to downloading the app or if they have any questions on the app or need any help. Then six days after that, we send them a little touch about following us on our social media accounts. So have you followed us on Instagram? Have you followed us on Facebook? Have you followed us on YouTube? Check out our social media accounts. We wanna grow those following accounts. And also if we get them over to those social media accounts, maybe they'll see some of the enhancements we provide and maybe they'll wanna add them, who knows? 10 days after that, we email them about Spotify. Even though we have a bunch of curated playlists inside of Vibo, maybe they wanna follow our Spotify account, which also has playlists inside of it. So we send out an email about Spotify. Then 40 days after basically the automation is activated, which happens to basically be like a month, a little bit under a month and a half later, we have the DJ send a text to the couple to see if they download the app. The DJ can easily look in Vibo and see if they've already joined the planning app. But in general, this text is more about the DJ sending the first ever text that they've sent because all of our DJs have different phone numbers compared to the office phone number. So this text goes something along the lines of for basically the template we have on the back end which you guys can get access to. Hey, Ashley and John, it's Rick, your wedding DJ. Just wanted to check in and see how things are going. Did you guys get into the planning app? Do you have any questions? Love the chat. Sometimes I throw in there, just wanted to create a group chat um, for us to be able to communicate throughout the process. This is actually the first time that the DJ is texting the couple. Now, the couple has the DJ's phone number from the get-go when they book. So they could text anytime, but nine times out of 10, they don't. So by the DJ sending this initial text, now there's a group chat created for the couple to communicate with the DJ via text if that's what they prefer to do. So now our automation is gonna transition from things that need to happen once they book the project to things that need to happen before the event. So this is where we're gonna move into a lot of the touch points. If you guys watch my lead funnel, you'll know that I'm a fan of providing wedding tips. So I've created a variety of wedding tips and checkpoints that happen leading up to the wedding. And because this is an automation software, I can send them exactly when I want. So right here, we have our day out check-in and we can actually call out what it is, how many days it is to that check-in. This check-in is the 200 day out check-in. So I will show you guys it real quick. But basically the subject line is straight up 200 days to your wedding. Hey, Ashley, Rick checking in. Only 200 days, yep, 200 days till we get this party started. Make sure you have the planning app downloaded and you start answering some of the planning questions. Let us know if you need any help. Easy, simple. Same sort of thing, 150 days out, some other catchy line about 150 days out, it's coming, coming fast, make sure you fill out your planning forms. 110 days out, we actually ask them for their wedding vendors. So this comes from the admin, but wedding vendor list question mark. Hannah checking in, communication between our vendors is super important. Yes, I will preference, we do have a section for vendors inside of the Vibo app. That is kind of with the DJ. So we go a step further because building vendor connections is super powerful in terms of networking and growing your business. So we go a step further 
further and we have a dedicated email that goes out 110 days out and basically ask them, could you take two minutes to fill out this quick form with the name, email, and phone number of basically of your vendor team. And this link goes to a Google form that we want them to fill out with. We want to know your venue, your venue's contacts. We want to know basically all the vendors. We want all the vendors, all the contact information. So that way we can reach out to them, which you'll see later on in this automation. We will make sure the follow up of all the vendors and get in touch with them prior to the event and make sure our per paperwork matches theirs so that we're all on the same page for your celebration. Thanks, Hannah. As you can see, we switch out the signature. All these are coming from the same email address, but we switch out the signature based on who they're coming from. And because we use the HoneyBook platform, it's very easy to do that because it, they can send an email directly in there so it doesn't look like it's automated, which is super powerful. 100 days out, another clever check-in somewhere along that point of, hey, it's 100 days out to your wedding, make sure you're planning, blah, 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 blah. Now we have some upsell points. Because you know, you always wanna try and upsell your clients to like, you know, add up lights, add a monogram. You don't wanna force it upon them, but just pitch the idea. Can never hurt. We do this all the time, and you'd be surprised how many times we add 300, 400, 500 dollars to our contracts every single time. It's insane. So 80 days out, we have the admin send a text over asking the client if they considered adding any of our enhancements or if they don't even have any, so a lot of times they just book the DJ for audio only. That's kind of how our brochure is set up. Go check out my full video on our brochure to explain how I do my system, but it's more of an all card system. 80 days out, it's like, hey, have you considered any lighting or additional enhancements? Of course, the admin's gonna check their contract and see what they already have so that they're not kind of like stepping on your toes. Just making sure, just a check-in point 80 days out, hey, are you considering any other enhancements for your day? The 50 day out checkpoint, I like to preference what is about to happen next. So 50 days till your wedding, Wedding ring emoji 50 days from now wait wow can't believe there's only 50 days left until we get to be part of your big day again I'm trying to word these so they don't look automated please make sure you look over your planning questions and finalize as much as you can don't forget about the songs for milestone events like first dance if you don't know what song to pick be sure to check out the recommendation list that are built into each section inside of our vibo planning software for things like cocktail open dancing I like the preference in here that we are DJs we can basically we can DJ so you don't need to pick the max number of songs even though it gives you 50 open dancing songs you don't need to pick them all so you can basically answer the question we have related to the vibe and communicate that to the DJ but then a preference is what's going to happen next I will reach back out around 30 days out to set up a video meeting to go through everything in the app and try to finalize the timeline together as always, let me know if you have any questions. That's actually a learning point that we've had last year that we just implemented into the 50 day reminder is around that 50 day out point, the 40 to 50 day out point, a lot of our clients, about 50% of them, we're kind of asking like, hey, can we meet sometime? By going ahead and taking care of that in the 50 day out email, they know that around 30 days out, I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to them to schedule that consultation, but I'm preferencing when that's gonna happen so they don't need to worry about it. 40 days out, this is another upsell point. So the 80 day one is more of, hey, are you considering adding anything to your wedding? Anything, any questions, anything like that, et cetera. The 40 day out is actually a recommendation. The admin does this, you can do this if you're a DJ, but 40 days out from the wedding, I like to do a recommendation. So again, I'm gonna consider a lot of different factors on the back end that don't necessarily concern the couple. So one, where is their venue? Is it a long drive? What all equipment do I already have booked for this event? And also, if you're on a multi-app company like me, what all equipment do we have available that day? Because we might have all of our uplights already rented out for other events. So I'm not gonna suggest uplighting. I'm gonna suggest something else. The logistics might be really challenging for me to get a hedge wall there. Or if we already have a big package, like we're already on pipe and drape and stuff like that, I might say, hey, have you considered adding some bistro lighting or stuff like that? It really depends on the event. And also, I kind of glance over their, their planning app to see what kind of a vibe are we going for? Are we going for more of a club vibe? I also am gonna look at their venue. Is their venue a pavilion with a bunch of posts? Probably not gonna recommend up lighting. I might recommend wash lighting or intelligent movers. Does their venue have really cool brick walls and wood walls that are gonna look awesome in uplights? I'm gonna recommend uplights. So you gotta consider all those factors, but normally this 40 day check in takes a few minutes to do, but say I go look, we have plenty of uplights available, they got brick walls, and they don't have any lighting yet. I'm gonna reach out to them and be like, hey, 
Just notice that we don't have any lighting yet on this package. Lighting really sets the mood and we can actually match your wet wedding colors for the event. And on top of that, all of our lighting is computer controlled. So it could be a stagnant color during the, the event and then it can change to party lighting later on. Would you consider adding up lighting to your event? Or would you like to go ahead and add up lighting to your event? It's gonna cost $400. Make a recommendation, again, it doesn't hurt to ask. And the key is you're trying to ask these questions way in advance. So 80 days and 40 days is pretty far in advance so that they might have a little leftover money to spend to add on a few little extra items. Now, 30 days out, this is actually one of the most clever things we do. Each one of our automations for each of our DJs, basically it says only 30 days to the big day. Believe it or not, time flew by just as fast as it did for me. I wanted to see about setting a meeting up in the next week or two to go over the timeline, blah, 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 consider any additional enhancements for the big day. We can go over them in the meeting as well. If you could use the link below to select the time on my calendar that works best for you too. And that link right there is a personalized link for me. So in my booked automation, it's got my calendar link to schedule your final planning meeting. In Ralph's, it's got his Calendly link. If you're not using Calendly for your meetings, highly recommend it as well if you've never heard of it before. I've talked about it many times before, but basically this link right here takes you to, I'll open the link for you guys just to show you, but it takes you to my calendar where you can schedule the time for your final planning meeting. Simple as that. On the 16th, I'm available at four o'clock. On the 17th, I'm available at two, 2.30, three and eight o'clock. Pick a time on my calendar so that we can have our final planning meeting. So to put this into perspective for you guys, this automation, all this stuff happens automatically. So for all of my DJs, there's an automated email asking them to schedule their final planning meeting without the DJ even knowing about it. So literally from the DJ's perspective, you just have final planning meetings pop up on your calendar and you're like, sweet. And then you look up all the details and you go have your planning meeting. Super easy. Again, the goal is that you shouldn't have to think about all the events you have coming up. You should only have to worry about the events you have this week, maybe next week, but mainly this week. Now, those are all the critical time sequences. And I also have sprinkled in throughout there all of those wedding tips. So these are the exact same wedding tips that I talked about in my lead funnel. And they are included in the booked automation flow as well with the times of when I send all of them. But basically I have a variety of different tips that get sent out before their event. So you got tips that send out 280 days, 240 days, 210 days, 180 days, 148 days, 120, 90, 60, and that's the last one at 60. So we also sprinkle in wedding tips throughout the process because nine times out of 10, our book clients never actually got to the point of seeing the wedding tips. Normally anybody that books in our calendar is our, they, they literally never made it to the wedding tip portion. On the occasion, maybe one in like 30 bookings came from the, the long-term funnel and they moved back in from the wedding tips. So nine times out of 10, they haven't seen all these. So again, check-in points are built in 200, 150, 180 days set up sales. All those are built in leading up to the wedding and we have mixed throughout their wedding tips to provide some education to our couples leading up to the wedding. Now let's talk about some of the manual tasks that populate for the DJ specifically to do. So the first manual thing, and it's very simple, other than the initial one, is 90 days, three months before their wedding. So if you imagine, they initially book, they get a text from the DJ asking about their wedding planning app, if they've joined in or not. Now if the couple never texts them again, there's another text point for them to do it. Three months out, I want them to text them and just remind them about where they're at on their planning. And this could literally be as simple as, hey, Ashley and John, how's the planning coming? Question mark. That's all it needs to be. You could point out something specifically, like uh, sometimes you know we have our procrastinators out there as couples and we look in their planning form and they haven't done anything. And it's three months until the wedding. So maybe that text is, hey, Ashley and John, I was just looking through your planning forms and I noticed that you haven't actually done anything yet. Wanted to see if I could help or if I can help or if you need a meeting, do you need more information, et cetera. You can imagine it's tailored case by case basis. So that's three months before. 45 days out from the wedding. So this is 15 days before they're gonna get the email to schedule their final planning meeting. All I want the DJ to do is to go and glance over the info in Vibo. So all the DJ has to do is go to Vibo, 
look at the percentage of questions answered, the percentage of songs, and maybe just glance through the whole entire profile and just see if they look like they're in a good state. Like, are they more than 70% done? Are they, do they have most of the info in there? Are they like way out in left field, like they are missing a lot of info? Or are they super on top of it, like 90% done? Pretty much it's just the glance over it. If you see them like anywhere below 70%, you know, you have concerns that they're not gonna have all the info, then they are supposed to do another text message to reach out and be like, hey, we need to get on top of this. So the 30 day out email goes out to ask them to schedule a meeting. Then we have a task that populates for the DJ four days later to verify if they've set up a meeting or not. So we want to double check because we can't rely only on the automated email for them to actually schedule a meeting. So we have a follow-up task for the DJ to then verify if they've scheduled the meeting. And we take it a step further, six days after that, the admin has to make sure that the DJ also has scheduled a meeting. So we have three layers of accountability to make sure all of our DJs have their final planning meetings. Also at 20 days out from the wedding, we want to go through, have the DJ verify that all of the enhancements have been selected. If you saw my full pricing brochure video, uh, we have open-ended bundles where they can select from three, two, four enhancements. And at this point in time, they might have not already selected all their enhancements. So it's up to the DJ to make sure that they select all their enhancements. Normally the DJ goes through and finalizes all the enhancements in the final planning meeting. It's what they're supposed to do. But that task is there just to double verify. Then 10 days before the wedding, again, this might have already been done in the final planning, but it's to make sure that the DJ has finalized the timeline and all the music is finalized with the couple. I always aim for 10 days out. Is it all, does it always happen? No, but there is a task to make sure that happens. Then 10 days out at the same time, the DJ needs to make sure he gets an assistant lined up. We always operate in a two person team and it is the DJ's responsibility to find an assistant. And 10 days out seems to be a good window to find an assistant for your event. Additionally, 10 days out, our admin fills out our vendor sheet and follows all of our vendors on Instagram. So again, this is an admin position thing here. We had them fill out the Google form earlier, but they also have the vendors asked for in Vibo. So we take all that information and compile it into a spreadsheet so that we have all the vendors documented for this event. And also we go through and we follow all of those vendors on our company's Instagram account to grow our network again. Week of the wedding, six days before the event, the DJ is supposed to text basically the couple and say, you're good to go, or hey, there's these last two things we need to finalize still, it happens. But um, pretty much you're just telling the couple, all set, all good to go for your event. Any last questions, any concerns, let me know. I'll get on top of it. Four days before, our admin is supposed to email a copy of the timeline or text it to all of our vendors. Again, we got all their info beforehand. We filled out our sheet. We could easily now send them a copy of the timeline for every single event coming up on the calendar. I will preference, sometimes we deal with wedding planners and wedding coordinators that are amazing. They're on top of their shit. They make our life a breeze. I'm sure you guys have dealt with them before. They are a godsend to us as DJs. When we run into wedding coordinators, and we know who those are, the ones that are on top of their stuff, Normally, they've already emailed us in like a group with all the other vendors. Here's a copy of the timeline for this weekend. And normally it's extremely detailed, more detailed than we even need. A lot of times when that happens, all we do from the admin side is we reply to that, excited to work with everyone this weekend. We don't want to step on anybody's toes and send our own timeline on top of the wedding planner's timeline. The only time we do it is when we run into wedding planners that don't really send a very thorough planning form, like it's very vague timeline, or they don't send it at all. If it's four days out from the wedding and we haven't seen a timeline from the coordinator, we're gonna go ahead and send it to all the vendors. I expect wedding coordinators and wedding planners that are on top of their shit to have a timeline in our inbox by Monday morning for events on Saturday and Sunday. Comment down below if you agree or disagree. Four days out, we'll send out our own timeline. Three days out, the admin makes sure the DJ has an assistant lined up, and then immediately after the project date, we move it to complete. So in HoneyBook, we have different stages. We take them out of planning, move them to complete. We have a task for that. After the event, the DJ has to submit their event report out form. We're multi-op, we have an event report out form where the DJ goes through and talks about all the good things, bad things that happen at the event. So that way we can stay on top of everything. Then one day after the event, the DJ is responsible for texting the couple and telling them how amazing of a time they had. It was amazing, great, blah, blah, blah. And also preferencing that we will be sending a link to leave a review. Then going back to vendors, three days after the wedding, which is 
happens to normally be like Monday or Tuesday, we actually send a thank you to all of the vendors we worked with. Now, we do this regardless. If we have a great planner or not, we go through and we send a thank you. It was awesome to work. The team was so happy to work with every single one of them. And these are individual emails. We do not do a BCC. We do not see a CCC. We don't do a group email. Each of these vendor emails, the before and the after, is an individual email to each individual vendor for the wedding. We're basically sending them an email afterwards. We're saying how great it was to work with them. And we actually asked them if we could leave a review for them. And also we preference, can we be on your preferred vendor list? We try to be very crafty with that. Again, if you want the exact email templates, literally the exact email templates for everything, what we send to the vendors, what we send before and after, you can literally download a complete booked automation workflow. It's a Word document that lists everything that's supposed to happen from our standpoint, what we consider to be the ultimate booked automation flow. You can get it all for 50 bucks. All the templates, all the timeframes is only 50 bucks. Click the link down below to get it. Continuing on, we don't have too many more left. This is getting very lengthy of a video, I understand, but this booked automation flow right here is what has generated so much success in my business when it comes to consistency, ease of use on my DJ side, and in general, improving everything that we do here. Nine days after the wedding, I've learned that you don't wanna send review and uh, feedback forms necessarily within the first week after someone's wedding because normally they go on their honeymoon. So nine days afterwards, we send an internal questionnaire. So this is a post-wedding questionnaire. And basically it's a bunch of questions basically on their experience with Fusion, the DJ, how was the performance, et cetera. Could they improve? Could they have done something better, et cetera. So it's a big feedback form because we want to make sure that this client is gonna leave a good review because I mean, every every client would 100%, I, I'm sure all you guys would agree that every event is a knockout of the park. You never have questionable ones and you would never get a bad review ever in your life. Yeah. So we send them a questionnaire because we want to preference and make sure that this client is not sketch when it comes to leaving us a good review. So we send that out. Then um, basically three days later is when we send the actual review. And pretty much it's, it's from the DJ saying, I had so much time. If you could uh, take a few minutes and help us uh, grow our company by leaving a review on the following surfaces, Wedding Wire, The Knot, Facebook, and Google. That's what we encourage them to do. So this is the email that goes out from the DJ, basically saying it was great being a part of your wedding. Could you please help our business by leaving a review on the following sites, Wedding Wire, The Knot, Facebook, Google. And then it talks about just like when, and you were looking for a DJ, reviews play a heavy role in future couples basically finding us. So if you could leave a review on all sites and maybe include a photo, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, I'll give you guys a pro tip. When I was still trying to get a lot of reviews before I had hundreds of reviews and I had like maybe 10 and most of those were like my friends leaving reviews, I would have a line in here. It would say basically, I know you are probably really busy. You just got married, of course, but if you could, Go leave a review on all four sites and post a photo. I will give you a $20 Amazon gift card. Just reply and let me know when you've done so. That generated so many freaking reviews in our company. It's insane. And basically for them to get the gift card, they'd have to go to all four sites, leave a review with a photo, and then they would also have to email me and tell me that they did it. And then of course, buying a $20 Amazon gift card is the simplest thing in the world. You just enter in their email address and send it to them. Super simple, and you get four brand new five-star reviews with photos. Win-win. So that's 11 days after. 17 days after the project, we have the admin add them to Wedding Wire and the Knot if they have not left a review. If you guys didn't know, you can actually go enter in the email address and the name of every couple that you've worked with, and then Wedding Wire and the Knot will spam them to try and get them to leave a review. So you don't have to do it as well. So if they don't leave a review on the first one, then we go to Wedding Wire and the Knot, we enter in their info, and then Wedding Wire and the Knot tries to get them to leave a review as well. 40 days after that, we're gonna ask the couple for pictures. A lot of you guys try to ask the photographers for pictures, but I'm gonna be honest, the best way to get pictures from your events is to ask the couple. Now, yes, we wanna build our vendor network, and yes, we do that as well. We do have a backend automation, not in this system. It's like a backend thing that in Zapier that automatically sends an email to the photographer based on the spreadsheets we got asking for photos. But this right here is uh, basically an automated email to the couple asking, hey, you got any photos that we can share? We'd love to share your, them on our profile. 80 days after it, uh, this is a new thing we're starting. I haven't got any of these yet, but 
we asked for a testimonial. I am not a fan of throwing the camera in a couple's face at a wedding, like right after the wedding to be like, how was the wedding? I, I don't think those come across as authentic. And I think a lot of the younger couples and the younger people out there see that as kind of false advertisements. And I also don't like inviting them to like a Zoom call and then asking them the questions. We're trying to incentivize them and this is actually where we're doing the Amazon gift card now is we're basically asking them, hey, if you had a few seconds, could you take your cell phone and record a 30 second little clip talking about your experience working with Fusion Sound and Lighting? And if you could, and if you do that basically, we'll send you a $20 gift card. So this is a new thing I'm testing out because I would rather send authentic testimonials of like a couple in their house on their iPhone recording and talking about their experience. I'd rather use that in our marketing than shoving a camera in a couple's face right after the wedding. Now, 182 days after their wedding, 182 days, crazy. We actually asked them for referrals, which happens to be six months after the wedding. I don't know why I blanked on that. Congrats on the first six months of your married life. Everyone sends the anniversary, which we'll get to, but we do a six month after. I wanted to take a moment again and thank you for choosing Fusion Sound Lighting. I'm currently looking to expand our business and would love to reach out to more happy couples planning their celebration. Word of mouth is a powerful tool, blah, 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 beyond weddings and blah, 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 powerful audio. Basically asking if you got anybody that's wanting, that needs a DJ. And would you be willing to provide referrals for me? You'd be surprised at how impressive that's increased our referrals by adding that. Then of course we have a one year check-in basically saying, this is Rick from Fusion. Congrats on being married one year. Just This is a one year anniversary. Happy one year anniversary. And then 366 days after the project, we finally archive the project and move it to complete. And that right there is a long lengthy video going over our booked automation. Wow, that was a lot. And if you guys are watching at this point in the video, hats off to you guys. Put hashtag squad in the comments down below because that was a long, overview of our booked automation. And also, if you just skimmed through all that because it is a lot and you would like a complete guide to download that has everything, including the templates, the timeframes, and everything I do in my company here at Fusion Sound Lighting with five different DJs, 200 plus events to manage all of our clients so that it's literally effortless. Basically, it's your personal assistant that runs the whole thing. I need you guys to click the link down below. You guys can go download the whole entire thing for just $50. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was extremely long, so I'm gonna keep it short. Like the video, comment down below, hashtag squad if you're at this point. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.